Last story I want to show to you just very quickly comes from this book. I've lost the, the front of it so you can't see, but have any of you seen this one? Yeah. <laughs> Do you notice that all of the artwork in this book was in black and white? Did you notice that? Well, those are pencil drawings, just like the kind you do, but you're right. There's two things on this page that are in color. One of them is the scarf that little girl has on her head. Now, that scarf has the same name as grandmother in Russian. Do you know what it is? Babushka. Oh, very good. Babushka. She's wearing a red babushka. If you look just at the bottom of her, her coat, you can see that her dress is blue. Now, what I was hoping is you kids would look at that and say, why did Patricia do that? The whole book is in black and white, but those are in color. Well, they're going to be very, very important in the story. But I also want you to look at that little girl instead of everybody else on that page and wonder why she looked different. That little girl was my great-grandmother. She came here all the way from Russia when she wasn't any bigger than you. She came with her mother and her father and her sister, but she had to leave behind grandmas, grandpas, aunties, uncles, everyone in her family she loved. And in those days, when you left Russia, you could never go back, so she never saw them again. They considered you a traitor. They didn't want you to come ha ever, ever come back. Every day, she put that blue dress on and the red babushka. I think she felt like as long as that was next to her skin, home wasn't that far away. But the day came, as it does for all young people, Anna kept growing, and the dress stayed little. One day she tried to put it on, and it ripped. She went to her mother crying and said, Mama, what am I going to do now? If I can't wear the dress and the babushka, I'm going to forget home. Her mother said, Anna, I know a way. Her mother got out a pair of scissors, cut that dress into pieces. She took those scissors and cut that babushka into pieces. She had a burlap bag full of clothes of all the people they had to leave in Russia. Took their clothes out and cut them into pieces. Do you know what they did with all those pieces? Oh, you guys, that's exactly what they did. They, they <laughs> sewed them all into a quilt. The edge of the quilt was Anna's babushka. The inside was made with not only her dress, the clothes of everyone she loved. And when it was finished, her mother said, Anna, now when you miss home, just touch the quilt, then you'll keep home here. That's why in our family, this is called the Keeping Quilt. Now, over the years, it's been used for so many things. A tablecloth, a picnic blanket. Everybody in my family, when they get married, they stand underneath this thing. Do you know every new baby in my family has been held in this quilt when they were born? As a matter of fact, I'm going to take you to the part of the book where... <laughs> a beautiful baby girl was born to my family. There I am in the quilt. Do you see the boy standing on the rocker there? Do you know who that is? That's my rotten red-headed old brother. <laughs> I've already written two books about him. You'll be pleased to know five more are coming. He's a never-ending source of inspiration. <laughs> we used it as a tablecloth for all of my birthday parties. There's my rotten red-headed older brother eating all the cake. <laughs> Oh, you guys, this is your cafeteria. If he was here visiting this school during lunchtime, kiss all that food goodbye. <laughs> Do you know, when I was little, though, this quilt used to be on my bed. But you kids may not realize, I still have the quilt. I brought it. Do you want to see what it looks like? Yeah. It's very, very old. And when material gets old, literally, it rots and it can rip so easily, so I have to be extremely careful. Hang on. Hang on. This is, this is the keeping quilt. Now, originally, Anna's babushka went around the outside of this, but the material that is there now is an American gingham. But even at that, that material is so old it's shredding. This is how old this thing is. Anything you see on this quilt that is the color of this little blue chicken, do you see it? That was Anna's dress. That was her dress. When I was little, this quilt used to be on my bed. And I always slept every night with the yellow horse here by my face. Every night before I go to sleep, 
I run my fingers around the edge of this horse. Do you know touching this horse right now, I can hear my grandmother's voice as if she's in this room. She comes sit on the edge of the bed and say, Trisha, whose dress made this? I'd say, well, that's Aunt Havila's apron. Yes. Whose shirt is this? Uncle Vladimir's shirt. I named all of these people. I can name them to this day. She would always end with, Trisha, whose dress is the blue? That's when I'd say, well, that's Anna. That's, that's my great grandma. That was her dress when she came all the way from Russia. Yes, my grandmother said. Do you know, though, the best thing she used to let me do with this, you guys? Well, you've all done it. She used to let me take this thing outdoors and play with it. I'd throw it up on my back, put a great big safety pin right here. I'd get my rotten red-headed older brother's socks, wad them up, stick them in my sweatshirt, so I had huge bulging muscles. <laughs> this was my cape. I was Superman. Da -da 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 I used to get on top of that meteor and fly around the yard, pick up sticks and break them. I was bending steel in my bare hands. It was faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> I remember my grandpa took my brother and I to a movie and we saw a bullfight from Mexico in the movie. I knew exactly what I was going to do with the rest of my life. My grandpa kept a goat tied in the front yard. So I went in and got the quilt. I put one of my brother's shoes on my head because I thought that made me look like a bullfighter. Walked out of the yard, walked up to that poor little goat. Hey, hey, Doro, hey, hey. Waved it around in front of that poor little thing's face till my rotten red-headed older brother let our bull out of the pen for real. Oh, you ain't kidding. That thing chased me all over the yard. <laughs> finally chased me up a peach tree, kept me up there for almost five hours. And you know how you see them in cartoons? It's accurate. They stand there, they paw the ground, smoke was coming out of his nose, spit was going everywhere, and I'm stuck up there and I can't get down and I'm crying and I, I finally look over on the fence and there's my rotten red-headed older brother. He's just sitting there, he's sitting there, and he's going, <laughs> going, Richie, Richie, go get Grandma. Have her come get this thing before he figures out how to come up here and kill me. <laughs> I've never seen my brother walk that slowly for the house in my life. Well, he got her, or I wouldn't be here to tell the story. Eventually, I grew up, I got married, I stood under this. You notice the best man is African American. If you've seen the book Chicken Sunday, this is Stuart Grinnell Washington. He has been my best friend for almost 50 years. The person, though, I really want you to notice is the very large man with a beard over by the cake. <laughs> you know who this is. <laughs> Same guy that used to say to me when he was your age, I ain't never getting married. And I ain't never having no rotten kids, neither. He's the father of eight children, <laughs> and they all have red hair, too. Eventually, I had a beautiful baby girl, Tracy. She lives here. She lives here in Denver, in Englewood. And three years later, beautiful little boy, Stephen. Guess what color his hair is? Red. Happens I am very, 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 very fond of redheads. You will notice every book I do has a redhead or two in them. I don't, I don't know if you know this about redheads. Ooh, they're enchanted. And they bring luck. So if you haven't got a redhead as a friend, you better get one skippy quick. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> hey, you're, I would say you're almost a redhead. You look it to me. Well, you can say now, you've seen the real keeping quill. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask now before we start the wishing? Anyone? You, you in the red in that. Absolutely, sweetie. Do you want to get to the wish rules right now, the questions? All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this thing out. I guess you have to leave by one doorway. What doorway? Because they're going to all file by. You want to leave this way? Or is it better they leave that way? Which way should they be? That way? All right, I'm going to hold this in my hand. You come by single file, reach up, give it a touch, and have your wishes. Now, there might be some young people in this room that are very uncomfortable with this, and you don't want to touch it, and you don't want to wish. 
for heaven's sake, of course, you don't have to. The energy is in you. That's where it is. For those of you that want to give it a go, give it a go. One touch is all it takes for as many wishes as you want. As many as you want. If you can't think of a wish now, don't panic. You don't have to think of it now. Touch it. Save it. Make your wishes for the next six weeks. I don't care. Mm -hmm. All I ask you to remember are the three you cannot make, and let's see if you do. The first is no. Money. We're listening. Second wish is you cannot change. change Not with this, but today. Find those kids here or in your neighborhoods that don't have friends. Be their friend. You're going to change everything for them. The third wish is no. Oh, all right, I think maybe you have it. Now, some of you, when you come by, you're going to touch this, and you're going to say, ooh, that felt, ooh, that felt, that, oh, that was, I mean, that's, that, 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 that felt, that was really hot. Some of you will touch this and say, no, it wasn't. It felt just like ice. Some of you will touch this and say, ooh, I, I thought she was kidding. She isn't kidding. I mean, I, I, I feel it. It's, it's, t t t t it's coming up my arm. Coming up my arm. No, it's back down here. I mean, whoa. Some of you, some of you will touch this and say, oh, get real. <laughs> it's more real than you think. I want to thank you for being so polite. You sat here over an hour, and you kids did not waver. You kids are excellent, you showed respect, and you listened carefully. What wonderful young people you are. Remember when you make this wish, to have a wish in your heart of what you are going to do for this old world. Mother Earth needs you, she needs you, she needs those brilliant minds of yours. So you get out there and change the world. Give yourselves a great big hand.